as Serena mentioned, I am the Chief Medical Information Officer at Stanford Children's Health. I'm also a pediatric ICU doctor and helped co-found one, one of the first ACGME-approved clinical informatics fellowships. This is the world that I live in as a physician. It's also one of the worlds that I work in as a clinical informaticist. And I want to take a moment and make sure that you all understand what I mean when I'm talking about clinical informatics. Clinical informatics is the design, implementation, and evaluation of the systems that we use every day in the delivery of healthcare. For the most part, we're not doing the amazing data science that you're hearing about throughout the day. Instead, we're partnering closely with the data scientists, our colleagues, to ensure that the insights that they are gaining are meaningfully used in healthcare to improve the quality of our patients' lives. I want you to leave today understanding two critical roles that clinical informaticists play in ensuring the meaningful use of data science. The first is ensuring that we frame the questions and that we get the right data to the data scientists. The second is ensuring that the insights that come from their work get back into the hands of the clinicians at the point of decision making. As you know, we have more and more data about each and every one of our patients. In the ICU, we have more than 200, 200 data points per patient per day that are generated in the EHR alone. It is critical as, data science, as clinical informaticists that we make sure that the right data from those systems gets to our data scientists, that they understand the meaning of that data, and they understand how that data impacts our decision making. For the last two years, the state of Texas was under the mistaken belief that their maternal mortality rate had more than doubled. Turns out that this mistake was simply because of a poorly designed user interface, a poorly designed data intake form, but that had significant implications for the state. It's absolutely critical as clinical informaticists that we prevent that type of mistake from happening. Additionally, as Serena pointed out, more and Catherine, more and more it's becoming uh, critical that as data science or clinical informaticists that we develop seamless ways to get the information from the healthcare setting to our data scientists without turning our clinicians into, into data entry clerks and contributing to worsening burnout. And then on the other end, it's equally important that we make sure that those insights are getting into the hands of our clinicians. Traditionally, this has been the picture of clinical care, as many of you guys have seen. The critical scientific insights and the evidence from our patients often fail to make it into the hands of our clinicians. And then the critical outcomes, the invaluable evidence that is coming from the practice of care, fails to make it back into the system to guide our learning. It is the role of clinical informaticists to take that broken line and create a circle, to ensure that the data from each and every patient is making it back to our scientists to inform our care, and then those insights are going back into the hands of our clinicians to create a virtuous cycle of learning. So to hammer home these points, I want to give you a couple examples from our own practice here in our clinical informatics program. These examples highlight both the pitfalls and the potential for clinical informatics to enable a true learning healthcare system. So the first example is around alarm fatigue. Uh, as many of you know, there are hundreds of alarms per patient per day, leading to tens of thousands of alarms in a hospital throughout the day. 85 to 99% of these alarms are completely meaningless. They're completely inappropriate. Now, that's a nuisance for one, but it leads to significant disruptions in the sleep and healing of our patients. It leads to our nurses being pull pulled away from important patient care. And in the worst situations, when those alarms are ignored inappropriately, it leads to catastrophic results for our patients. So Vina Goal, one of our first clinical informatics fellows, partnered with Sarah Poole, a PhD student in our biomedical informatics program, to tackle this issue. They realized that the pediatric pr parameters for heart rates and respiratory rates were based on the norms for healthy children. Now, you can imagine that a child in a hospital might have a slightly higher heart rate or a slightly higher respiratory rate than a kid playing at home, and that doesn't necessarily mean they, mean it, need, mean they need an intervention. So what Vina and Sarah did was evaluate the data from 7,000 of our hospitalized pediatric patients and create new norms for hospitalized children. They implemented those new norms into our physiologic monitors, and significantly decreased the heart rate alarms, 
but significantly increased the respiratory rate alarms. They were surprised and understandably disappointed, but this is where clinical informatics comes in. They had to go back to the clinical care setting, setting understand the flow of data throughout the wards, and understand the workflows of the nurses working in those wards. It turns out, despite the orders that are in the electronic health record, that the respiratory rate alarms on the monitors were set according to a default by age that were much wider than the uh, printed parameters. So taking this information into account and taking the information from their data analysis, they created new respiratory rate alarms and significantly decreased the inappropriate respiratory rate alarms without any unintended consequence for our patients. The second example I want to talk about is, uh, relates to care of our premature infants. Uh, hyperbilirubinemia, or jaundice, can have significant uh, toxic effects for developing neonatal brains. There is fairly good evidence uh, for how to treat this and prevent the negative effects in full-term infants. Unfortunately, we don't yet have the same type of data for our premature infants. There are consensus recommendations from the experts, but when we evaluated our own data, it turned out that less than 50% of our providers were following those recommendations. So Yasser Arain, who is one of our neonatology fellows, and Dr. John Palma, who leads our clinical informatics fellowship, partnered together to create a fairly simple clinical decision support tool that was integrated with the EHR and could be integrated with EHRs around the world takes data straight out of there, and then produces clear recommendations for the providers at the point of care to guide their decision making. After the implementation of this tool, we saw a significant increase in the compliance with the recommendations from a me median of 48% to a median of 70%, leading to the standardization of care. But more importantly, this tool allowed us to collect data about each and every one of these patients, about how the, how the care was provided and their outcomes, so that now we're creating new evidence that could be fed back into the clinical decision support tool to finally determine the optimal care for our premature infants. So I'm incredibly excited about all the work that's being done by the data scientists on this campus and around the world. I know that we will continue to see more and more insights but I'm also equally excited as a clinical informaticist to work with them to help frame the questions and ensure they get the data they need to accelerate those insights and then apply them back into clinical care to improve the quality of life for our patients. Thank you.